So I bought another cheap inverter and we'll open it in a second. The reason I bought another cheap inverter is I'm working on that UPS project for my office and I, when I got the, the power wall built, I capacity tested it actually using this APC UPC and it ran for over 24 hours draining the power wall so I could get a capacity test done. And luckily the power wall pulled full capacity and I'm happy with that. But I have to say this thing was hot. I mean, almost scary hot. These things really aren't meant to run for 24 plus hours off, you know, off the battery. Um, it made it, it's fine. I think these are high quality electronics. They're just not meant to run for that kind of time frame. Um, so I don't know if I want to make this part of my my overall project the easy thing is to just slap an inverter on on the power wall and you know i'll hot swap between the the when the when the upcs kick in if there's a power failure and the upcs kick in i can unplug the upc from the wall plug it into the inverter and and run it off the um off the power wall um it will require manual intervention but I just don't know if I want these things running 24 hours. Now maybe I need to modify this and put a little active cooling on it. Maybe that's the problem because I think this is all passive electronics. I don't think there's any cooling in here. And uh, it opens up easy enough and I could easily probably add a little cooling fan to it. But that might be a project for another day or something to think about. Um, but for now let's see what we got in this inverter package. This is another cheap Chinese inverter. Um, mainly because the, the normal brand I buy from Amazon, they're like right, currently like twice the price I, I've paid for them in the past. And so this one, it is cheap, but it's, I tried to not go too cheap. I'm hoping that this is still reasonably good quality. I did try not to go too, too cheap with this inverter. Um, so let's see what we got. sweet car <laughs> I have to say the box is bigger and this is getting smaller and smaller I'm a little worried about it. oh my god look at the size of this thing okay all right I might have I might have gone too cheap this thing is tiny holy crap now um, it says thousand watts but that's max output continuous output is 500 watts and this is a 24 volt 110 um, so we'll need to do some testing on it um, just look at the size of these little wires you know obviously you're not going to pull a thousand watts through through these little wires so um i might have gone too cheap on this i have to say i'll have to i'll have to check the out the sine wave on this and see if we're getting any um any like flashing when you run lights or things off it so um let's uh hook this up to the power wall and let's see how crappy this is so actually before we mess with that inverter I realized this battery is still mostly discharged from my capacity test. It's only 23 volts. Um, and that actually gives us a good opportunity to test recharging a lithium iron phosphate battery using this UPC. Um, we don't know how full this is going to get, how happy this thing is going to be charging, how, what kind of charge rate we're going to get. Um, because again, this thing is built for um, lead acid. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, how long, you know, what happens when it hits full, does it stop charging, what kind of absorption do we get. Um, so, I am going to hook this up, but of course I've ended up with a female and a female, so I'll need an adapter. Luckily I have a, and that adapter is even the wrong, uh, yep, even my, my adapter is the wrong adapter. Okay, so we'll need a different kind of adapter, I'll find an adapter. Um, Let's hook these up, let's turn this on, let's see what kind of charge current we get and I'm going to let it run and let's see what happens when we get to the sort of the top of the charge and how full we can get this thing. So let me find an adapter and let's get this thing going. Okay, I actually just put my meter in line and um, that way it'll actually allow me to see what kind of current we have running. Um, and I wired this meter with male and female connections on both ends. so. Doesn't matter if I got two male connections, this meter will adapt both sides. So let's plug in the uh, UPC. 
and let's see what happens as far as charging goes. It's only a one amp current. Hmm, interesting. You can see it's one amp. Um, at one amp, this is 105 amp hours. It'll take 105 hours to charge at one amp. Um, so that's interesting. Now the voltage has jumped right up. This was at 23 volts and this is displaying 26 volts. Let me, let me put a meter on this and see, see what's going on here. It's a main negative, that's a main positive. Oh, 20. Oh, <laughs> I accidentally measured seven cells, not eight cells. That's why I thought it was 23 volts when it's really 26 volts, as you can see. So this thing is nearly full. So that's fine. This test is still valid. Let's see, I'm gonna leave this running and I want to see um, what happens as far as uh, charging current, absorption, uh, you know, what happens to this battery when, it, when this UPC thinks it's a lead acid. How long will it keep charging? Will it stop charging? Um, yeah, so let's let this run and we'll keep an eye on it. We'll check back on it and see what happens. So as you can see, Charging has basically come to a stop at 27.1 volts. We're at 0 0.01 amps, so like 10 milliamps. Um, and actually, you can see it's start hitting zero occasionally. So I actually think you can use um, the UPC to charge these lithium ion phosphates. Um, now, you might think, hey, this battery... Um, this battery should charge to 29 volts. Aren't I missing a bunch of capacity? No, because lithium ion phosphates have almost no capacity in the top part of their voltage range. Above 27 volts, there's probably less than 3% of their capacity is above 27 volts. So these are probably 97, 98% charged. Um, so I do think you can charge these batteries using the uh, UPC, um, so that's good. So the only thing we gotta deal with is maybe the heat on this UPC, um, because it does run hot, and we we'll, might need to find a way to actively cool it. All right, so here is what I have assembled. I have shoved the small Chinese inverter on the side, it goes through a switch, runs through a fuse, and then um, through an XT60, and the reason I kept the XT60 is that allows me to switch between when I'm testing the UPS and when I'm testing the inverter, I can switch between them as I need to, um, just plug in, and then all of that obviously still runs through the, the BMS and back to the battery. Um, so this is our setup. I like it. It's, you know, this is still portable. It's heavy as heck, but still technically portable. Allows me to carry it into wherever I need to use it. Um, so, um, now that this is assembled, we can do a lot more testing. Um, but first thing I want to do is test this inverter and see what kind of uh, sine wave we get out of it. Easiest way is with a light bulb. If you get a lot of flicker out of a light bulb, it's not a good sine, pure sine wave inverter. So, we'll start with a light bulb and we'll go from there. So, first impressions are very good. Um, I've got a light hooked up here. And this is the same light I used on a previous video where I tested a really cheap inverter and this light flickered like crazy on that inverter. There is absolutely no noticeable flicker from this light right now, um, which is excellent. So I think that this is putting out, you know, close to a reasonable sine wave. Um, that other one was just flickering constantly and this one is actually, um, you know, I see no discernible flicker. now. You technically need a, um, you know, uh, um, a, um, uh, it's, it's slipping my mind. We need a, 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 you know, a meter to measure the sine wave to check that it's a pure sine, but um, uh, an oscilloscope. But as of right now, I don't have an oscilloscope. So the best I can do is just check for flicker in a light, which 
has worked in the past on red showing cheap meters were not pure sine wave. But this one, no, no noticeable flicker. So uh, I'm happy. So uh, next we'll, we'll try to load this up a little bit and see. It's uh, supposedly 500 watt continuous and 1,000 peak. Um, so we'll try and see if we can get a 400 watt load on this and see how it does. 520 watts continuous. So this uh, we are pulling over 500 watts from this uh, uh, from this inverter so far, no problems. We'll run it for a bit, check that it doesn't overheat, but uh, I think this inverter is a winner. So it did actually fault out after a couple minutes at over 500 watts. So 500 watts really is the max for this inverter. But again, that's what they claimed. And um, it's warm. It's warm. It's not burning me, but it is definitely warm. Um, so, you know, definitely keep this probably more in the three, 400 watt range. Um, but that's what this is for. Remember, this is built to power some network equipment. I still haven't decided whether it's going to be with the uh, UPC or through the uh, sine wave inverter, but the way I've built this, now I have options. I can plug in either as I need and uh, feel, you know, whichever way I'm more comfortable with, I can, I can switch as I see fit.